Okay, so you all got your data from yesterday's test. Thank you for turning your data in on time. Um, let's look at all the good stuff first of all. There's a copy of the test, of course, on the back. So, when we refer to the problems, you have access to it. I start on top. First 468 students, 468 freshmen took the test. Okay, again, that's a lot more than last year. <coughs> and that's, that's pretty exciting that we have all the freshmen um, now taking algebra, no matter where they stand. And I have to say the good news is that this test is uh, um, about the same as last year's freshmen. There's a, there's a little bit of drop off, but considering we're taking all, all the students who would have usually been in AB class, we're looking pretty good. All right, let's look uh, across the board. Uh, can you point out anything that you see that kind of stands out to you? We're looking at our strengths right now, really. Problem number two, okay, we were a little better on that one last year, but again, considering, I think that's still pretty good. We're at the 7 to 3% range, which uh, we're liking. And uh, we'll try other strength. Number eight. Number eight. Multiplying polynomials. Okay, yay. Pretty exciting. And almost number nine. A cousin to number eight. Thirteen to do two. So again, those are those are some that are looking pretty good. Now we're gonna look at the ones that we didn't do so well on with an emphasis on okay, we're gonna ask these again. We're gonna pick five that we ask again. Um, for the next test. So let's start. And you can throw them out there as you see them. Yes. Word problem. Word problem. That's surprising that the kids can't do the word problems, I think. <laughs> I believe it's. Yes. <laughs> we'll talk to English about that and make sure it's on their daily warm ups. Daily warm ups in English. All right. So those are, those are good. Two. We have five and six. Anything else? Seven. Let's hand down. All right. So now, then let's go on. We, we know the five problems. Let's look at somebody, okay, and it wouldn't be me, who did pretty well in particular problems, right? Ones we're going to ask again. And what strategies did they have um, or did they use? Like Ms. Porter, number 11. Like Ms. Porter, number 11, uh, proficient, yeah, as opposed to the rest of the department. Yeah, that would work. Number 11. Number 11. Okay, I kind of remind them that that 2, the exponent, that they need to use the base and do a rewrite. So they're writing 6n minus 8 twice, and then they're going to do the FOIL step. So I kind of require them to write it twice in preparation for solving the problem. So yeah, write it out. Emphasis on writing it out, because I do think that's where they made the mistake. Oh, okay, anything else you see in there? Well, on 8 and 9, I noticed that Nico and Cress and myself scored somewhat high. Wow, somewhat and high. <clears throat> I don't know what they did, but I chose to use two different methods to teach that. I used FOIL and the box method. Because oh. those kids that couldn't get the horizontalness of the FOIL method were getting the box method. And so maybe that is what I was able to get more students on board using <coughs> more than one strategy to, to get across the point. I took the other approach. I said, I don't want to confuse them with two strategies. I think I just want to score really low on the test. <laughs> so maybe it's not confusing them. Maybe it's just capturing more, more students in, in that. I keep that in mind. Yes? When we were reviewing, um, what I did was I actually had experts. There are about, we would go over maybe four different types of problems um, that day or for that part of the class time and I chose four people that I knew knew how to do the problem so um, I gave them each a whiteboard and I assigned them to a group every time for about 10 minutes they would go over with those um, a small group of students and after 10 minutes they would get up and go to another group so each time they would actually um, teach the other students how to do that type of problem so I thought that was really useful I think it's really useful too if there's, you know, because we all have the students, especially now that we're teaching algebra to all freshmen, the one who's acting up, the one who has power issues in class, right, that you can use him as one of the experts. Just do some individual training while everyone else is doing a warm up and they can use him and I think, especially during the review time. For it. Um, another review technique that, that I used was 
I took all the problems that were going to be on the test and I made three of each kind. And then um, I had the students kind of focus on their strengths and weaknesses. So everyone would do the same problem and I'll check it. And if they get that problem correct, then they move on to the next set of problems. But if a student missed that one problem, then they had to go back and correct it and then do another problem just like it. And if they get correct, then they just move on to the next problem. So it's kind of emphasizing on master your weaknesses so they could see what they need to work on and what they don't need to work on. Yeah, I think that's great because I think some of my students, the problem was that they thought they knew what they were doing, right? And I thought they knew what they were doing too, but that's really actually showing that they know what they're doing. I think that would be, uh, that would be helpful. Okay, one more. Three. And number one was bad. Yeah. One, two, three. Well, I, think, I think number one three. and number seven are, are similar. similar. I kind of disagree. I, that minus sign is in front of the parentheses of number one. Right. That, that throws them every time. They might change the first term of the parentheses, but they neglect to change the second one. Right. That's and true. that's yeah. not, unless we change number seven to look somewhat like number one, to have that, you know, like maybe put a minus sign in front of the two. two. Uh, yeah, yeah. That might, then, then you could say combine the two problems, but. So you want to distribute a negative. Okay. Yeah. All right, who's, who's writing the next test? Who's on the list for writing the next test? That you said yes? Yeah, that's me. Okay, so <coughs> make sure when we add number seven okay. that there's a negative in front of that second term. And then now we'll take care of one and seven. Happy? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. No, that's good, that's a good point. You're right. However, I'm more happy when there's not a number in front of the parentheses. Because the kids forget that there's a one there. Okay, what about number ten? That was like number ten. Yeah. I think in their mind they would see number one and number ten as a completely different type of problem. Because number ten we called exactly. combined like terms and number one would be called something else in their, in their mind. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> what if we ask number seven and then on the open-ended side we ask number one? So we'll get an analysis of both of them. That's good. Okay. Rather than distributing the negative, does anybody just tell them to simplify 2G minus 7G? Yeah. Make it negative That's the way. That's that the way I thought. Worry about but then they had a hard time with subtracting and then the minus inside there, and they didn't know what to do when it was minus, minus 5G, and they just gave up. And then they didn't realize that because they're all Gs, they could just put them Combine together. Them. They thought that they had to be separate because I didn't do any practice. This was my fault. But let's get back now because uh, I'm still anxious to know what these go do. Number, number six. Number six. How, how did you get them to get number six? Well, because I knew they did so poorly on it last year from our data from last year. Um, I had them working in groups of four for the review, and um, I put four word problems on the board, and I would take one group at a time up to the whiteboard while everybody else in the groups were working on the review, the other problems. And then they had to work out all of them on the whiteboard until they were correct. and they had to use each other to verify if they were correct or not. And then they couldn't go back and sit down until they all agreed that it was okay and then I would check them and make sure they were okay and then I would bring another group up. Especially emphasizing on, on number six on the word problem because last year we had difficulties with it as well. So you held them accountable. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. I think also just spiraling in the, in the warm-ups, mm -hmm. like every day having one or two of them in the warm-up. Of these particular Yeah, of a word problem. We have to throw them in there. And it takes space and time in your warm-up on, on the whiteboard or something, but it helps when the kids see it every day. They come in, okay, it's another word problem. How do I approach this? I have to set it up. Linear equation, blah, blah, blah. So you're using your warm-up as a review for these? Also, yeah. Okay, anything else? Thumbs up. So the next time we'll talk about, okay, soon, okay, we'll, we'll be a couple days into the chapter, but, but we'll have a rough draft, Cynthia, of, that, of the next test so that we can look at it and start um, heading in the right direction. Okay.